Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week we had a bunch of different releases as far as iOS 16.2 RC and more. We expect those updates very soon. We also have iPhone 14 Pro delays still, and there's even more about the upcoming iPhone 15, Macs, and more. This is your news update for the week of December 12th, 2022. And while we're waiting for iOS 16.2 to release to the public, we do expect that to be as soon as probably tomorrow. Many people thought it would be as soon as today, but last year they released it on December 13th with iOS 15.2. It seems like Apple may be doing the exact same thing. However, they did release an update today and that's for AirTags. So there's a new AirTags update that's been released to firmware 2.0.36. Now, unfortunately, there's no easy way to actually update your AirTags. It's not even as simple as maybe plugging it in or anything else because there's no way to plug it in. But you can see the firmware update version in Find My and it will update on its own as it's nearby. So if you go into Find My and if you find one of your AirTags, tap on it, you'll actually see the serial number and the firmware version. And then it will just update on its own all by itself. And I need to replace the battery on that as well. Uber and Uber Eats are rolling out support for live activities finally. The apps were updated last month, but live activities just wasn't there. There. But if we scroll down to the installed app, some people are starting to see this, but if you go down to Uber all the way at the bottom here, go into the settings, you'll see that we have an option for live activities. If this is enabled, you should start to see them. We're not seeing full support yet, but we're seeing some little things from it. So hopefully the things Apple was talking about in the keynote with live activities, we'll start to see here with arrival times in real time and much, much more. Apple has decided not to implement a feature it was going to push last year to iPhones with iCloud Photos. That's called CSAM Photo Protection. In a statement to Wired Magazine, they've said we have further decided to not move forward with our previously proposed CSAM detection tool for iCloud Photos. Children can be protected without companies combing through personal data, and we will continue to work with governments, child advocates, and other companies to help protect young people, preserve their right to privacy, and make the internet a safer place for children and for us all. That's something that many people will be glad to hear as that was a bit controversial. Quite a few companies do it already and Apple was trying to do it anonymously, but there was enough concern that they decided not to and instead introduced advanced data protection with iOS 16.2. So that's something that's going to get even more secure in the future. iOS 16 is now installed on about 70% of devices in just 100 days after its launch. According to Mixpanel, they've said that iOS 16 is installed on 68.9% of devices with iOS 15 at 24.82%, and then iPhones running older operating systems at around 7%. So it's incredible how fast they get updated, although not everyone has wanted to update to iOS 15. Apple is still planning to launch Apple Music Classical, according to sources. Apple Music Classical is supposed to be a service after Apple acquired Prime Phonic some time ago, and it would allow you to have a separate app for classical music. We've seen it in the code for some time, but so far we haven't seen it in a separate app yet. This could be coming in the future, maybe once we get iOS 16.3, or maybe we'll even have to wait to iOS 17. But I'm not sure why it would be better to just integrate it within Apple Music with its own classical music section like we have already. There has to be a difference there, so maybe they're trying to decide whether or not that would be good or not. Now, the EU has said that they're going to mandate USB-C on phones in the near future. They've actually set a date for this to actually take place. They set a final date where all devices under its new laws have to have USB-C for charging by December 28th, 2024. Since Apple is in its redesign cycle, usually every three years, we should expect the next iPhone to have USB-C, but I don't think they're going to implement it on current iPhones since they don't need to until 2024. So that makes a lot of sense. I think we'll see it probably in the next ones. After the announcement of the recent update with iOS 16.2 and advanced data protection, once this is enabled, it makes it very hard for someone to actually see your data unless they have your encryption key. Recently, the FBI in the USA has said the new end-to-end -end encryption that companies like Apple are employing are making it difficult to protect America. And I generalized that statement, but they were going on saying it would be difficult to protect people from cyber attacks and much more. This is something that's good and bad. And in the United States, we feel very strongly about privacy, but I'm curious what you think about it in the comments below. 
This is something that I'll be turning on just because I want my information end to end encrypted and me to be fully in control of it. But let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. iPhone 14 pro max and iPhone 14 pro continue to see delays. However, it does seem to be getting much better with production being moved around the world within India and other places. And if we go into the Apple store app, you can see here that there's one available today in my local store. So if you were to order it online, it wouldn't be here until January 5th. But if I went and ordered it now, this specific deep purple color, 14 pro max and 256 gigabytes, it's available right now in my local Apple store. This varies, but many people are still seeing a big delay. And Apple continues to work on that by transitioning production out of China. One of Apple's largest suppliers has just recently invested $500 million into India to help them produce iPhones in that location, as well as other places such as Vietnam. So we're going to see more and more transition out of China to local places, whether that's in the United States with different companies or places in India and other places around the world. Tim Cook this past week also confirmed that they would be buying chips from the new Arizona TSMC plant, which I've mentioned multiple times and that the chips would be stamped made in America. He said today is only the beginning. Today we're combining TSMC's experience with the unrivaled ingenuity of American workers. We are investing in a strong, brighter future. We are planting our seed in the Arizona desert and at Apple we are proud to help nurture its growth. So you're seeing that shift around the world and hopefully this eases supply chain constraints in the future. It will take a few years usually though to get up to speed. However, one thing Apple didn't do yet is meet their two-year Apple Silicon transition to all models. Three years ago, we got the all-new Mac Pro, but now it's the last device to lack Apple Silicon. We had a Mac Studio, but so far no replacement for the Mac Pro. If you live in Sweden, Norway, or Finland, HomePod Mini is now available to order in those locations. So if you've been wanting to get your hands on one, finally try one out and be able to use it, it should be available now. You can order it and hopefully they're available easily and you don't have to wait very long. But they're available and they're around $99 depending on the overall currency exchange. Apple's self-service repair program, where you can repair an iPhone display or battery and more, is now available in Europe. It's within France, Germany, Italy, Poland, Spain, Sweden, the UK, and Belgium. So those countries can now go to self-service repair and get different parts and tools if you want to repair your devices yourself. And they're always adding more parts with Macs and more. So that's something we are starting to see more and more of, although it's still about the same price or cheaper if you just bring it to Apple and have them do it. Now, additionally, this week, of course, there's more discounts. It seems HomePods and AirPods and everything else are constantly on discount. Let's open this up here, AirPods Pro 2, and I'll link all of those deals in the description, everything from iPads to MacBooks to some older iPhones and more. So depending on what you're looking for, I'll try and find the best deals for you, but there's been quite a few deals and it looks like AirPods Pro 2 are still about $50 off, which is a great deal for something so new. So again, I'll link those in the description if you want to check them out. According to Mark Gurman at Bloomberg, Apple is still working on a car. Initially, it was thought that they'd have a full self-driving vehicle and have a vehicle that resembles something similar to the Canoe electric vehicle that maybe would drive itself from destination to destination. However, Apple is said to have recently simplified its plans and instead offer automated driving on highways and a more traditional style vehicle. The cost is said to be under $100,000 and the plan is to have it finalized in 2024 with plans for it to be sold by 2026. It takes a long time to get everything like that up to speed and so we could see something like that, but Apple's never been in the car market so we'll have to see what they actually come up with. Let me know if it's something you'd be interested in in the comments below. Now, Apple is said to be working on foldable devices for quite some time, and according to the ELEC, Apple is working on a foldable MacBook. It could be similar to an iPad, but instead fold and be a 20-inch display when unfolded and a 15.3-inch display when folded in half. This would not be available, though, until 2026 or 2027, as it's just in the prototype stages. So Apple typically waits for others to get things moving, and then they come in and try and do something different that works best for themselves and their customers. Industry analyst Ross Young has said that Apple is working on a 13-inch MacBook Pro that instead of having an LCD or mini or micro LED display would have an OLED display and be available in 2024. He's got a pretty good track record as far as the overall 
display technologies that Apple's working on, and we can expect that in hopefully a fully redesigned 13-inch MacBook Pro, or maybe they'll push it to a 14. But the display seems to be 13 inches, where it would be a super bright display and replace what we have with LCDs. We're also expecting some updated Macs, but we didn't get the M2 Pro or M2 Max this year or M2 Ultra like we thought we would. Recently, two Macs were seen in the Steam database in November, and they were listed as Mac 14,6 and Mac 15,4. These would be the updated versions of the M2 Max and M2 Pro with updated specs and basically the same design we had before. Again, like I mentioned before, M2 Max and M2 Pro Geekbench scores appeared online. So we keep seeing those tested. Someone has their hands on them and they're testing them at Apple. So we could probably see those sooner rather than later, maybe in a couple months or so. Now, Apple is still working on their AR VR headset, and I reported a couple weeks ago that we heard that the AR VR headset would run a new operating system called Reality OS. However, the news was that Reality OS had been renamed to XR OS, and according to 9to5Mac, Apple's new headset may have two different OS variants instead one that is based on iOS called Reality OS, and one that is Mac based called XR OS. It's possible that one of the OSs could refer to a companion device that would help run the headset. Set. We could see the headset for the first time as soon as January, according to many recent reports. However, it makes much more sense to me to have them introduce it at WWDC so you can have developers make apps, depending on when they plan to launch it to the public. And so that's all the news this past week. Of course, iOS 16.2 should be just around the corner as soon as tomorrow. And usually I really wouldn't expect it later than that with an iOS 16.3, probably releasing sometime later in the week, 16.3 beta one or something along those lines. And then probably beta two in the middle of January or maybe second week of January, since we're getting close to the holidays and new year's. That makes a lot of sense. So that's what we have typically every year. I would expect the same this year. If you have anything else you'd love me to cover in these weekly videos, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.